Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Lydia with Sweet King's Garden and today we are going to go on another garden tour. So it is currently Thursday, August 18th. <laughs> so we're getting towards the end of the summer. You'll see the garden definitely looks a little bit different now. I've taken stuff out, I've added some things in, things are starting to die off, but nonetheless I'm just here to show you the transformation of the garden. So we're going to get started today with the garden extension. So that is my largest plot that I have and then we'll go up to the front to see what those smaller beds look like. First up, the bull high beans. <laughs> I have admittedly not had a lot of time to really harvest a lot from the garden aside from tomatoes, which we'll get to that in just a moment, but the beans have taken a back seat for right now and I have not harvested any more beans since the last time I shot YouTube footage. So these are all pretty mature. Some of them I are nice to where I can still harvest them, but others are probably too far gone in terms of what I'd want to cook up. But you'll see that the bull high bean trellis is thinning out quite a bit. The foliage is starting to drop and dry out. I don't know if this is normal or just, um, I don't know, some kind of pest damage or something, but it is towards the end of the season. It's still hot here, although We've been blessed with like 60 degree weather at night. It's been beautiful. I'm just kind of using this as a nice decorative trellis. And I mean, that's that's pretty okay by me too. But yeah, definitely not as pretty to look at as it was during our last garden tour. So on the other side, you'll see that the other side of the trellis is completely bare and that is because I did end up ripping all of the sugar snap peas out I think like a day or two after I shared the last garden tour the plant was just too far gone I was able to harvest some of the fresh sugar snap peas ate them for a fresh eating um, just last weekend sowed a new round of sugar snap peas and just as I was getting my camera out for this garden tour I'm noticing the second round of peas are starting to make their way out of the ground. So that is just so exciting. So I sewed, I started these on August 13th. So I'm excited to see the sugar snap peas back on the trellis. <laughs> Next trellis is again another bare trellis. This is where we had our pickling cucumbers. We tore them up as well. We did leave this one cucumber plant because it seemed like it was going to be doing okay. So we'll see how it goes. But I did end up sowing some spaghetti squash and looks like that is starting to germinate. And I think I sowed another one over here. Yep, that's starting to germinate too. Man, I picked a good day <laughs> to shoot <laughs> shoot this uh, video. So I have two spaghetti squash plants on either side of this trellis. Now, I wasn't sure. I've never grown sp spaghetti squash before. And if you recall in my last uh, garden tour video, wasn't quite sure what I was going to put on this trellis. And I was excited to hear that spaghetti squash can be trellis if you're just careful with catching the fruit, which I've had tons of practice with, <laughs> with growing watermelon this year. So I'm excited to see what spaghetti squash looks like on a trellis. So moving on to our third trellis, we still have our sugar baby watermelons here, but you'll see the biggest one that we have is missing. And that is because Alex and I were able to harvest it. It was beautiful. If you want to check out my Instagram at Sweet King's Garden, you'll get to see what that looked like. But we just picked it at the perfect time. Uh, as you'll see, the plant itself isn't looking too great. And again, this is my first year, so I don't know if this is any type of disease or just kind of part of... I'm thinking it, something's wrong because that looks like mildewy stuff. I could probably treat it, but I'm just kind of letting it go <laughs> at, this, at the moment. So looking into the wild 4x24 bed at the front here, things are definitely looking kind of scary. So back there I have my borage plants. Oh, I have to show you. 
So back here, I planted some dragon tongue bush beans and they are starting to germinate too. How lovely. Oh my gosh. That's just so exciting. So I've never grown dragon tongue booked bush beans before. So I'm excited about that. My thought is that by the time these start to come up, the watermelon will be pretty much gone and this, the beans will fill out this section. I think the borage is probably gone, although it seems like some of it's okay. I don't know, I might pull out the borage and plant something else here. I have to read up on that to see. I don't think borage comes back. Maybe just self seeds year after year. And <laughs> our sunflowers, so they're not looking too great. They're still setting like new sunflowers and that's nice, but we're finding squirrels like sunflowers. Again, I've never grown sunflowers before. And there's a squirrel that keeps jumping onto my sunflowers, eating the heads or taking the sunflower heads off and like dragging it through our garden. And I know it's one particular squirrel because as I walk up to the garden from the side of the garage, I see him jump off the sunflower, shoot out through my garden and up until the up into the same tree every single time like that's just his escape route so but they appear squirrels apparently like sunflowers as much as we do nasturtium still going strong billowing out my husband and i have tried that and that was pretty cool and then our candy cane peppers are doing really really good they're definitely darkening in color and I have a friend of mine who's also growing these and I was a little self-conscious about the coloring on these leaves and his plant is looking the same. So I think that's pretty normal. We still have some chamomile here. And then I do have my edamame. I have three edamame plants. I am so late on harvesting these pods. They're way past the nutritious peak of me harvesting them so I do I need to pick them like urgently but two new things in the garden here I'm just seeing if this has germinated I don't see yet this is supposed to be purple cauliflower and then that first edamame bush and then this is supposed to be kohlrabi I don't see anything germinated back here actually I'm realizing I never ran irrigation to these so I have to make sure that they're getting adequate water. And then I have another purple cauliflower on that side as well. I definitely sowed some colder weather crops in. I know we're kind of at the heat of the summer, so it may have been too early, but I'm hoping that by time the crops actually germinate, that the temperatures will start to cool down and it won't totally shock all of my plants. So we'll, we'll have to see, but I, they also need water. <laughs> At least the, the plants that do not have the irrigation ran. So on the other side of the trellis is again, as always, just the mirror image. So we have the chamomile sunflower borage back there. Moving into this garden bed, air tomatoes are coming in hot. So we have plenty of fruit that are ripe on the vine. I am processing tomatoes this weekend and I'm even off two days next week so that I can dedicate my time to actually processing and harvesting so it doesn't take up all of my weekends all the time. So we have our easy sauce tomatoes. This will be designated for some pasta sauce and bruschetta. Then this is Paul Robeson tomatoes, which we've gotten a couple of tomatoes off of this plant already. These are the Dark Star Hybrid tomatoes they are starting to split we got some heavy rain the other night but these are just gorgeous and they taste so good setting off a lot of fruits these are black strawberry or actually these were labeled ruby monsters but they're actually black strawberry and these are just my favorite tomatoes which i've ended up um oh this guy he must be from a different plant okay 
I think we have part of the dark star hybrid mixed up over here. But these black strawberry tomatoes, I was eating them raw, like they were not making it out of the garden at all. And just, just because I couldn't stop eating them. But then I finally had so much between those and then some of our prairie fire tomatoes that I ended up making dehydrated sun-dried tomatoes in oil. So good. So I'm resisting the urge to eat the black strawberry tomatoes so I can make more sun-dried tomatoes in oil for us to have during the winter time and so on. And then the last tomato plant over here is our lemon boy. So these are the big yellow tomatoes. They are super tasty. We have two nasturtium plants billowing out on other, either side. And then as we make our way to the other side of the garden, this was another thing I did last week was actually weed. But we have peppers. I don't know what kind of pepper plants these are yet. So we'll find out. So I have one pepper plant here. And then another one, I think this is a sweet banana pepper. At least that's what the label says. But, you know, I'm pretty self-conscious and suspicious of the labeling. <laughs> Making our way to the second four by 12 bed, I pulled up a lot of the butter crunch lettuce. I did leave some so I can save the seeds. And I still have the Swiss chard, however, I did so new things in here and this here is white russian kale so i just sowed some seeds and those came are coming in nicely then i do have one kohlrabi plant here that has not germinated yet that i see and then this is a mirror image of what was on the other side so i have kohlrabi and a different kind of kale this is a scarlet kale and I don't see, oh, yep, it looks like we have a little friend here that's just germinated, maybe another, yeah. So I'm excited to see, I'm excited to have kale back in the garden. I had to rip all of it out because it was just too far gone. This is evidence of the squirrel that I was saying, so. They definitely drug the sunflower all the way over here and just left it here for me to see what it did. The fourth trellis, we have our cucumelons that are so prolific. And is this not just gorgeous? Like just coming down, draping down. These are still setting off a lot of fruits. I picked a bunch for friends of ours to give them to their kid and um, that I haven't done anything with them. I was pickling a lot of them. On the other side of the kales, we have more tomatoes. So these are the heirloom rainbow tomatoes. They are looking beautiful, like this dark, deep burgundy red. And you can see these have split also, but they're just looking so neat even though they're super crinkly, but they're just really pretty. And then we have tons of black strawberries. I picked a lot, so I mean, this is considering picking a lot of them. There's still quite a bit left. We have some borage left over, and then some more black strawberries. And then these are prairie fires. These are Alex and I's favorite tomatoes this year. They are so sweet and almost sugary. It tastes like candy. Like that's how sweet those tomatoes are. So for anyone who's not really particular about tomato flavor, if anything, I would recommend the Prairie Fire tomatoes because they're definitely where it's at with tomatoes. So moving on to the last four by 12 with the toma uh, tomatoes. Oh, I'm just noticing this guy is not looking good. I'm gonna take him off so he doesn't take any more energy from the plant. But these are more easy sauce tomatoes. They are coming in very good. They're all over the plant. They, there's a branch over here that instead of just cutting it off, I figured since I didn't have anything on this arch trellis, 
because I had took those sugar snap peas out that I'll let the tomatoes have this space for right now, at least until the peas start to take off. And then, what do we have here? Paul ropes and tomatoes. Oh, I have to pick. I have a lot of tomatoes to pick. I'm debating picking them now. <gasps> no way. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, this is definitely. I'm going to say that's our squirrel friend that did that. This was not the proper way to take off a tomato. I think I was just so excited. But I think I'm gonna harvest my tomatoes. <laughs> I do have my harvest bas basket out here. I think I'm gonna harvest my tomatoes before the squirrel gets to the rest of them. That's just part of gardening. I know, I ha and I say I'm okay with sharing. Ah, oh, I'm just noticing this. I think he got another one. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be picking some tomatoes tonight and taking taking them in. My oh my. So I'll leave this here in case he wants to come back and not take the other ones that are still on the vine, but. <laughs> ah, so Paul Robeson, we have Dark Star tomatoes. Again, they're looking beautiful. And then these are Ruby Monster Hybrids. So they're looking really good, except for this one that was looking so good. Dang, that was like beautifully shaped. This is like a perfectly shaped tomato too. It's looking really nice. And then we have Lemon Boy Hybrid over here. Looking really good. For now and then on this last trellis here we have Chinese red noodle beans very similar to the bull high beans I just kind of let these go and they're now just decorations for us I have not cooked with these anymore I've saved a ton of seeds so I'm hoping to get some interest in our community to see if I could do a seed swap because I have tons of these seeds to give away if anyone's interested but these are just really cool for a backdrop and whatnot. So on the other side of the garden bed, I sewed, haven't sewed anything here yet, but this is where the kale was. So I took that up and then we have a lemon boy hybrid clan up this way. There are poppies. This is holy basil. I don't know if I confirmed that one here with you all, but I did look it up on my plant app one day. And this is holy basil that I did so. So it does smell absolutely wonderful. So that's been a nice little treat. I thought it was a weed and I'm glad I didn't pull it up. So that was intentional. And then this is another lemon boy, very similar. Oh, it's already setting fruit that's blushing. Um, I actually routed this to that trellis so that it didn't crowd too much of this space. I've never grown tomatoes this close together before, so I'm kind of careful or trying to be careful. So that's it with the tomato beds. Moving behind the Chinese red noodle beans, we still have a bunch of tomatillos. I have not harvested any today, but you can see there are some that have dropped onto the ground. So I'll need to pick them up. We have some that just easily fall off the plant. So I have to make something with these, but they're still producing a lot. Then we have carrots still. And then I did sow new carrots back here. I'm seeing a little sprout. I think that was carrots, right? Yeah, cosmic purple carrots. So hopefully they take off. And then in our last four by 12, I took up all of the zucchini that was back here. 
and planted pumpkins. So I have two sugar pie pumpkins here. I have zinnia, which actually the zinnia, this is the best it's looked all year round. And then these are Jaredale pumpkins. These are like a slate gray pumpkin. So I'm interested to see how those look. And then I have some old carrots from earlier in the season that I haven't pulled up yet. But I will be, I still have a handful of things that I will be so sowing into the gardens for the fall garden. But those definitely require the weather to break. Okay, I'm gonna show you my tomato haul. I didn't pick every single thing that was on the vine, but I picked what looked like would be at risk and super delicious to a squirrel. So we have several lemon boys, these prairie fires. One thing I do want to show you about the prairie fires are, is that, oh, my hands are, <laughs> my hands are disgusting from dealing with the tomato plants. So the prairie fire tomatoes, you'll see splits very, very easily. Even I've been watering very consistently, but I think we had just one really bad storm. Some of the tomatoes did split, but the prairie fires have been splitting really since they've been maturing. Just very easy even without like a surge of water and stuff like that. So that is one thing to keep in mind, although I highly recommend it for people who are just starting to eat tomatoes because they're just so sweet and delicious. We will still eat these even though they're split as long as it doesn't look like bugs got to them. But uh, they do split very easily, so just keep that in mind. So let's head up to the front and I'll show you what we have going on up there. We're now at the front and I'm going to show you <laughs> what an untamed herb garden looks like. So starting with the butterfly bush, still looking pretty, uh, nice and prolific. My herbs, aside from all of the grass that's growing, are doing really well. So these were, this was a basil plant that I purchased. This was some sage that I had purchased, but it's just like really expanded and looking really good. Here's some sage that I started from seed. And then lamb's ear that I still have not dealt with. We have parsley <laughs> that's hidden back here. A lot of catmint and time this is just a jungle it is so crazy um i will this stuff pulls out very easy hopefully the next time you see a garden tour this will be taken care of but we have some thyme and lots of chives lots of basil doing really good well i've already made a bunch of pesto and we have some rosemary some oregano and then here is some cat mint that just kind of died back but i'll just have to get the dead stuff off a lot of citronella my potatoes i haven't checked on them i don't know if these are good or not wonder what oh well, it seems like some of them that's new yeah maybe we'll dig through that together one day uh, but that that day is not today because <laughs> it's starting to get late and um, I have some things to do. So I'm happy to show you this will look new. These are those cucumber plants that I had started that will be trellising and filling the whole backside of this porch area. But I sowed some new stuff in this garden bed for the fall garden. So in this first row here, I think I have carrots cosmic purple carrots. I haven't seen anything germinate here, but here I do have some drug dragon tongue bush beans and I can see some of them have germinated just like the others in the back garden. So I have to guide some of these cucumbers back and it looks like they're too close to the water because they're starting to get mildew stuff on it, them already. Then back there, those are armorillo carrots or amarillo carrots, so those are yellow carrots. And then we have some white Russian kale, which happy birthday to you, little guy. Looks like some of that's coming up. And then over here we have 
the Marvel of Four Seasons lettuce. So I'm very excited about more lettuce. And then, of course, the cucumbers back there. Okay. And then, making our way to the other side, you're gonna see this looks pretty bare. And that's because I finally took up all of that, a lot of the extra dill that just like volunteered. And I did away with that TP trellis that was originally in intended for those Kajari melons that just never germinated despite my efforts <laughs> but I'll try next I'll try again next year so I took that trellis out and then I actually just sewed some more zucchini so I'm happy to see that those have germinated and so hopefully we'll get a second round and then we have poblano peppers these two plants have done a magnificent job it doesn't look like too many peppers on here because Alex and I have eaten a lot of them <laughs> so once we have a second round of poblano peppers, I will absolutely share our favorite poblano recipe with you all. It is amazing. Every single person that's made it has raved about it also. I did not come up with the recipe myself, but it's just something that's like super flavorful, highly recommend, and pretty versatile. So I'm just waiting for these poblanos to catch up so we can make some more stuffed peppers. And then, this front plant here is, jalo is a jalapeno plant. I've harvested a good amount of peppers from here as I've made plenty of salsa already this year. And then this is the poblano pepper that got chewed up by the deer. It's, it's going okay. I haven't seen a pepper from it yet, but we'll see. And then of course my dad's cayenne pepper plant that we saved the seeds from last year. That's doing nicely. And ooh, that's very fragrant. fragrance. Yeah, I could smell that on my hands. Ooh, that's a tomato hornworm on that dill plant. And you can usually tell because when you touch them, they poke out the little horns. I don't know if you could see that. So, I mean, they're harmless, but they're not harmless to tomatoes. They will annihilate your tomato plants. <laughs> so I'm happy to see them on the dill and nowhere else yet. So we have banana peppers. I've harvested some from this plant. It's not a super high pepper plant, but it's, it's setting fruit. So that's all that matters. We have some basil back there, some shishito peppers, which I will absolutely grow again and grow a lot more of and these black strawberry tomatoes. Now, story with this, and they're not looking too good. So I'm, oh, I'll probably have to spray these with something or just kind of let them go, I don't know. So during the last garden tour, I had a lot of black strawberry tomatoes from this plant that were like on the cusp of being ripe. They were probably ripe during the video but I figured I'll let them go a little bit longer and just harvest a bunch of them at the one time. Didn't work. The deer definitely got to them. And like I found all of these, like a branch just hanging on the ground. Um, so maybe these are the deer's favorite tomatoes. <laughs> I don't know, but they're, these pests like to test my patience. But we have some more parsley, dill, basil, and then of course I have the Swiss chard, kale, Swiss chard. I'm not really harvesting anything from those. They're just kind of there taking up space. And then we have the extra tomato plants that these are looking curly. The leaves are looking curly, so I don't know what's up with that but they're setting fruit, so that's good. So that just about wraps up this garden tour. Good morning, YouTube. It is the next day and I'm editing yesterday's garden tour and realized I never had a proper closing. So <laughs> thank you so much for spending your day with me and walking through the gardens with me. I hope you enjoyed the garden tour and I can't wait to see you next time. Take care.